So here's Tiny Toons. Every Tiny Toons reviewed part seven, which is gonna be the last five episodes of season one, plus some updates on episode ratings and also the best and worst episodes. So yeah, here we go. First up for this part is New Character Day, where Buster and Babs audition new characters for the show. There's a funny Roger Rabbit bootleg cameo at the beginning, so yeah. Fun fact about this episode, this is Kennedy Cartoons, but it's just credited to Wang for some reason. I'm going to assume there's some additional animation, but there's no Wang-esque animation looking stuff in the episode. So either they did do some stuff and I just wasn't looking hard enough, or they didn't and it's just the wrong credit for no reason. Anyway, let's get into the actual shorts. The first short is The Roaches, which is based off of a 90s band from the 90s called The Roaches, but they're actually Roaches because it's the funniest thing imaginable. They have a party in Hampton's house, and there's some um, kind of halfway decent songs in it, so this one is a 7 out of 10. There's some funny cameos from The Lone Ant from Hold That Sugar, and also the stupid Flea family from The Horrible Starting From Scratch. So yeah, they just do that in there for no reason. Next is the return of Pluck Twacy. There was no actual first Pluck Twacy, so uh, yeah. This is basically just the great piggy bank robbery mixed with the parody of Dick Tracy and also plain Daffy thrown in there. That's basically yeah, it's an 8 out of 10. A couple interesting things that I wanted to note about this episode is that the rap film sequence before this episode has Joe Alasky voicing Daffy, but in the actual story is Jeff Bergman for some reason. So I have no idea what it even is. Second, the thug chase scene in the gangster hideout is some of the shittiest, cheapest, laziest Kennedy cartoons animation out of the whole entirety of the library. Well, in the time zone stuff at least. And the Roaches segment also has some pretty crappy animation in it. But uh, it's less bad and less noticeable. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, we turn off Twisty 8 out of 10. Another fun fact about this episode is that the Roger Rabbit parody character, just credited as White Rabbit, is credited to Steven Spielberg, even though Frank Walker voiced him. There's literally just the least amount of reason possible for that. So, uh, yeah. Next episode, Here's Hampton, is a trio of Hampton cartoons, an amazing triple feature with the best character in the whole entirety of Tiny Toons, which is Hampton. Hampton stars in the parody of TV show intros, those are the backgrounds. The first short, Milk, it makes a body spout, is Buster and Plucky trying to make Hampton laugh so that milk come out of it, comes out of his nose. This one's 8 out of 10, and also features a horrifyingly animated, horrifyingly voiced title card with a cow saying it, and I think that's a reference to a milk commercial. So, yeah, this is a little fun fact for you. Next is America's Least Wanted, which is an 8 out of 10. It's a Casey Kasem parody called Flaky Flakem, which Casey Kasem plays, so that's fun. The plot is Plucky discovers that Hampton has a criminal doppelganger that he tries to turn in the real Hampton for a board. There's a bunch of hilarious slapstick comedy antics, and then it turns out that the real Hampton is put in jail in the end. So, great stuff. 8 out of 10. And finally, for this collection, is John and Barton, where Hampton tries to cook a lobster. This one is a 7 out of 10, it's not as good, also the lobster is horrible, annoying, and not funny, and Elmira just randomly appears out of nowhere in Hampton's house at the end for no reason, because I guess they're too lazy to actually write something that made sense. So, uh, yeah, this short is 7 out of 10. Now for episode 63, No Tune is an Island, where Buster, Babs, and Plucky and Hampton are on the beach, and then they find a treasure map, so then they go to some sort of island, and they agree to search the treasure together, but, uh, the map ends up being ripped, and then Plucky steals the map, and then there's a bunch of random antics until it turns out they have to have the treasure, so then, yeah. Eventually, they end up getting jealous and fighting over the treasure the whole time. Then they get it on the boat along with the random stupid birds, and they get the third treasure overboard. It was like the real treasure was the friend they made along the way or something. This one is executes the story as decently and basically just like the bare minimum of quality, without it being horrible and annoying and stupid and boring. So, yeah, seven out of ten. Next is K Acme TV, which is uh. Buster and Babs hosting commercial and TV show parodies of the Titans cast. Basically, the plot and it is filmed to the ground with parodies and great. And this episode is an incredibly amazing 10 out of 10. This episode features great animation by Wang and also some great parodies and stuff. 
And since this is a show from the 90s trying to reference a bunch of things, and obviously a lot of these things are going to be lost on the modern audiences, but the majority of them still make sense in context. So, yeah. Also, this episode with the People's Court parody tune court segment predicted Coyote vs. Acme. At least Coyote vs. Acme. Well, there was an article that the movie was based on, and it was most likely that this was based off of that article, but it still predicted it. Also, I uh, just checked my notes, and the rating was a 9 out of 10 the whole time instead of a 10 out of 10, but basically the same thing. Also, hilarious fun fact for you, this is the last episode produced for the first season. It was going to be aired as the last episode of the first season, and it's also the credits guy that references it being episode 65. But then it was, it was aired as episode 64, and there's a hilarious fun story which leads into the next episode. So, yeah, this episode, 9 out of 10. So, our final episode for today is High Tune, where Buster and Babs try to go to Acme Land, but then they end up getting misdirected to a random old crusty western town, which I think is a part of the theme park at first. But the entrance of this actually a little western town where the Coyote Kid, which is just a Wally Coyote, I don't know why they just use it, but I guess it basically is him. So, yeah, the Coyote Kid and this Coyote Gang end up terrorizing them, so then Buster and Babs and Plucky and Hampton try to defeat them, and it's a whole entire western action, except for that it's boring and dumb. Anyway, continuing on from the story of that previous episode, it was originally, KFM TV, was originally going to be the last episode of season 1, but then this episode ended up getting delayed because the Kennedy Cartoons animation, I guess, was so horrendous that they decided to have Wang do a, like a bunch of retakes. I honestly don't really think it was worth it. The episode is barely even that good. This episode is really, really boring with horrible pacing. Also, there's barely any stakes and is stupid and bad. Also, High Tune was the 50th episode produced and the Kayakman TV was the 65th episode produced, as previously mentioned. So, I don't know how long it would be between those episodes. Uh, I guess the retakes it just took so much time and there were so many retakes that had to be done that had to be delayed a whole entire 15 episodes. Well, even though it's most likely that it probably wouldn't have actually aired as a 50th episode, but let's just assume that it did, and it had to be delayed by a whole entire 15 episodes. And since the show was first uh, aired as daily syndication, then that's basically like 15 days. But yeah, probably produced way before then. Also, I think that they plan out when the episodes are going to be scheduled and aired. Uh, before, well, probably after they actually finished, but before they're actually aired, so uh, yeah. Anyways, the whole entire behind the scenes story is more interesting than the actual episodes, which leaves this season out on a not really that good note. So the episode overall is a 5 out of 10. Kennedy cartoons ended up being fired after the first season, and oh, not only because of all the retakes and stuff, because I think the retakes only happened with, Luna Be with the Luna beginning this episode and the previously mentioned New Character Day, which is the last episode produced by Kennedy Cartoons, which is produced as episode 64. So I think it was because of the incredibly horrible animation of New Character Day that they were fired, and also the inconsistent quality and stuff. So, uh, yeah. Sense of Season are not really that good note. Anyway, now it's time to get into the best and worst episodes, updates, ratings, and all that other stuff. So anyways, for updates on ratings, A Quack in the Quarks, which was originally a 6 out of 10, is now a 7 out of 10. It was way more decent the second time I watched it. Well, I watched it uh, more than twice, but the second time I watched it in recent memory. So, yeah. I have no idea if I mentioned it in any previous review or not, but Starting from Scratch is now upgraded from the prestigious 2 out of 10 to a slightly more prestigious 3 out of 10. Even though it's so horrible and boring, it has uh, some kind of sort of not shitty things about it. So, yeah. Also, I did you watch an American Tale, and it's an amazing 11 out of 10 classic. But that didn't really enhance the quality of the episode. Also, I mentioned this in a previous part, but I want to mention again that the Anvil Chorus is now a 6 out of 10 instead of the 4 out of 10 that I previously rated it. So, yeah. So, the overall rating for the season, this was calculated before I made all the changes to the ratings and stuff that I mentioned previously, but it was a 7.27 out of 10, which is basically just 7.3. But now with the new ratings, it's probably somewhere in between that and a 7.5. So basically the season executed everything decently according to the overall ratings. There were some good episodes and some shitty episodes. Now here are 13 episodes that are great. 14 A plus episodes. So I just realized that I counted two of them in the same thing. 14 A plus episodes. Not in any order. First up, you asked for parts 1 and 2. 
For the first part, there's three great shorts, even though the last short isn't as great as the first two shorts, it's still great. It was the first episode produced animated by Wang, and even though it has some crusty animation, I honestly like it. And the second part, you asked for it, part two, has three great 10 out of 10 classic shorts with amazing Kennedy Cartoons animation, and yeah. Next, Buster and the Wolverine has some of the best Kennedy Cartoons animation. And yeah, it is crusty at times, but that's basically just the usual Kennedy Cartoons animation. So, yeah. I think that most of the reason why I like this episode is because of the animation. Next is Inside Pluggy Duck featuring a Batman short, which is amazing. And then the next slightly less amazing, but still amazing short where Plucky turns himself into an eyeball after doing the ultimate wild take of all time. So, yeah, this one is also great. Next, K Acme TV. I did already talk about it in this part, so I won't really expand on it, but basically, it's great. Next is Life of the 90s, which proved that the ACOM animation studio could produce episodes that weren't the worst thing in the whole world. This one includes three shorts about Life of the 90s. As we see mentioned, ACOM animated this episode, and it's some of their best titans work with some great expressions and great animation. And also, Abraham Lincoln just exists, so extra points for that. Next, Groove Tales of Real Rabbits. The freelance animation is kind of crusty, but they do pull off some great expressions, and there's two great shorts in there. Tiny Toons Music Television has the incredibly amazing character Julie Rowan, so instantly 10 out of 10 classic, but also amazing TMS animation, also great songs and great music to go along with the animation. Well, I guess the animation going along with the music, technically, but yeah, you know what I mean, 10 out of 10 classic. Next, A Ditch in Time is a fun time travel story, and even though in the part that I reviewed this episode in, I think it was part 4, I mentioned a stupid plot point resolved with a stupid joke with a prehistoric acme makers randomly being destroyed in Act 3, and they make a stupid joke about it not being destroyed and not even explaining it. Besides that, this one has some great writing, a great concept, and great animation by TMS. And uh, yeah, basically all of those things apply to the next episode, Test Chest which is three shorts, all great. Next is the Slugfest segment from uh, one of the most popular episodes. This one has incredibly amazing animation and also a great Ninja Turtles parody. The final of the episodes for this section, Her Wacky Highness, Hallwit Plucky, and Joint of Sound Effect Makers all have great writing, great animation by TMS, and also really great character episodes. Anyways, those are 14 episodes that are A+, but now, now let's go on to 8 episodes that are shit. So, uh, starting off the 8 episodes that are shit is starting from scratch. This episode isn't nearly as horrible as when I first watched it, but it's still kind of boring and I'm not going to watch it ever again. Blue Bob the Bugs Bunny is just boring and barely even has any actual story. High Tune is a horribly underwhelming season finale that I just talked about and I don't even want to talk about it anymore. The two, three bear shorts, bear necessities, and teddy bear's picnic are boring as damn fucking shitty ass hell and also have stupid and bad animation. Also, horrible voice acting. Next is the first anthology of those shitty episodes, Wacko World of Sports. Has three episodes with shitty animation and barely even good executing, and there's barely even actually any pacing or gags. Next, Strange Tales of Weird Science has sh really shitty animation and shorts that would otherwise be decent. And finally, Whale's Tales. That's it. I've already did like a 3 minute long review on it and the part that I reviewed it in, but basically summing up, shitty animation, shitty writing, barely any pacing, barely any gags, a horrible stupid story, and basically it's just trying to shoe in a, a shoehorn in a stupid lesson because it's garbage. There's an episode later on, it's in season 3, it's uh, like an 8 or a 9 or a 10 of 10, one of those three. It's called Toon Stakeover, and what happens in it is that Buster and Baz and Plucky want to make a story that isn't strictly comedy focused, and then the executive Cooper, the villains, are getting pissed off at them because it was so horrible, and it's basically just a reflection of the real series, where they do anything besides comedy, it just feels so incredibly horribly. So, uh, yeah, basically the 8 episodes are shit. Anyway, next in part 8, it's going to be the entirety of season 2 and a rating and ranking and stuff for that. All in one part. It's probably going to be the longest one yet. Bye.